Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode on the Changemakers podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, so today's episode features Josh Witten. Um, Josh is a proper change maker. Um, he's the founder of Make Soil, which is an initiative that turns organic waste into nutrient-dense soil through composting. Um, Josh is a regenerative technologist. Um, he's vegan as well. So when in his regenerative technology, you know, he's really all about making sure that the plant food systems that we have that they are the most sustainable um and uh, yeah so he's all about sustainability he visited um dubai for cop 28 where he gave a talk uh, which is how i got to meet him quickly when he was um, visiting dubai and uh yeah so in this episode we will be talking about um for starters his initiative make soil and how composting is really much the easiest thing that we can do personally for the climate that we can do right in our own house. Um, and then we talk more about, you know, rethinking um, food systems and moving away from the commercial food system that we have now and really just kind of grow our own food, um, eat local and just really just rethinking the whole way that, you know, we are currently eating so that we can be sustainable and, you know, have a planet that we can live on, um, which obviously excludes animal agriculture as well. So we touched a little bit upon regenerative animal agriculture and that um, that could be possible, but obviously for ethical reasons, a uh, plant-based food system is the way to go. And uh, yeah, so I really, really enjoyed talking to Josh and getting to know him. And uh, he has such a change maker mindset. So it's really cool to learn from him and see all the ideas he has. You know, like he talks about how um, we, can, we should be using AI, for example, in a way that helps us to figure out how to save the planet. So that's like an example of his change maker mindset. Um, so yeah, so I really enjoyed getting to know him and I hope you will too. So without further ado, please enjoy my conversation with the one and only Josh Whitson. Welcome, Josh. Thank you for being on today's episode. Glad to be here, Farah. So yeah, let's uh, hear like an introduction about you, what it is that you do, and why it is that you do it. Hmm. I guess I've been a change maker since before I knew it was a thing. Yes. And, um, and so recently, we've begun using this phrase to describe what I do and saying I'm a regenerative technologist. And yes. we totally made it up, but the reason is <laughs> that my entire life I've loved nature and I've loved technology and sadly those two forces are generally at odds like technology is usually being turned into products right and those products are just made out of the planet usually in a very haphazard way and yeah. destroying a lot of the ecology and so I'm really focused on how do you use technology in a truly beneficial way that's harmonized with the planet and so way back in the day uh, the first company I did was fixing public transit systems all over the world using technology. And I wouldn't say that was regenerative, but it was more towards sustainability. Like, how do we fill up mass transit with riders? Because if you have a bunch of buses and trains going up and down that are empty, that's terrible for the planet, right? right. So I figured out how to do that using GPS technology way back in the day. And since then, I'm way more into the kind of how do you work with uh, natural ecology in general? How do you harness the principles of nature such as with the make soil initiative where you have humans teaming up with all these microbes to turn all of our food waste and, and organic matter back into new living soil so that's like a very regenerative uh, thing and we're using technology through the web platform to orchestrate all that so regenerative technology yeah for the win here we go because before we started i did have to google what is uh, regenerative technology what does it mean and what do you call someone who works in regenerative technology um so thank you for explaining that for all the people that it's basically working with technology to yeah better the planet to figure it out and sadly like, there's just because of the way our education system yeah. has historically worked like not a lot of people know a lot about both so people young, young people who like nature generally yeah. end up in like biology or zoology or parks management or something and then people who like technology end up in computer science or computer engineering or electrical engineering right. and neither neither study talks about the broader world and then yeah. here we are eight billion people trying to run a planet now and not enough people know how a planet works right so it's got us into the situation we're in you know i actually had a question which i was going to ask later on but kind of on this topic of how young people can get involved more in sustainability um and i think one of the ways would be to join make soil could you oh yeah, yeah. that's the simplest way sure right. so 
people ask this question all the time. Yeah. What, what can I do? Is there anything we can do? Yeah. And over and over again, I say like, well, what are you doing with your food waste at your home? Uh, what are they doing with food waste at your workplace? And nine out of ten times, the answer is it's going into the trash. Yeah. And so this is going to sound kind of harsh, but I think we really have no business looking far afield for ways to be regenerative or sustainable when we're not doing the most basic thing, nice. which is actually a highly impactful thing. So um, right now, all that food waste that people are generating, over 90% of it worldwide, is going to landfills every day. And that's off-gassing methane, which we don't need in the atmosphere. And we're losing all those nutrients from the food system. So that's why I decided to start Make Soil because I just, wherever I went in the world, I would see that this wasn't being addressed. And it's like one of the biggest problems that's kind of the easiest one to solve that has no possible downsides, no political arguing about it. Like it's 100% good with no possible way of going wrong. We just need to keep all organic matter out of landfills and turn it into new living soil. So cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's th it's the best way because people can actually make a difference in their own home. Like everyone throws away trash every single day exactly. and we can actually do something about it and turn it back into soil. It makes a difference and it also changes the person. Mm -hmm. So once you begin doing that, you're now participating in a regenerative act. You're touching the finished product and yeah. it really transforms the mind and you start to see opportunities to be regenerative all around you that you didn't sure see nice. before. And the struggle we're having now is people who have no direct experience with regeneration are going around trying to be sustainable. And that often ends up just like protesting or yeah, lobbying some perfect. politicians who get scared to do something and they don't know what to do either because they've never had a regenerative experience. So we've got to snap out of that. And how do we give everybody a regenerative experience? That's what we're doing with Make Soil. So Amazing. get your food scraps together. Try to find a soil site near you. We have a, a handful of them here in Dubai. They're we, all over the world. I know, I saw. Yeah. And then even better, start a soil site. Really decide to master the process of composting organic matter into new living soil. It's a fun process. Like if, if, any, if you've ever thought of like brewing beer or making wine or baking bread, like honestly, the world doesn't need any more beer, wine or bread. We need more soil. So you'll cool. get the same kind of artisanal hit producing soil as you would with these other other hobbies. Yeah. And then you can be a soil maker. And that's like one of the most important things a person could do right now, to be honest. And you have uh, how many countries do you know that make soil that has a soil? Yeah, oil? there's there's a soil site in, in, in over 70 countries now. Wow. Um, some some countries have a lot, some have a little. Yeah. Uh, but it's as simple as somebody watching this, and hearing about it, one. going to the map and starting one. That's how it spreads. It's all very organic how it spreads super cool well yeah. thank you for creating this initiative how long has it have you how long ago was this that you started it soil? launched about four years ago nice yeah. amazing and as a kind of quintessential visionary personality i tend to um be really early with my ideas and so i think the realization that soil is important and that organic matter can turn back into new living soil and that it's one of the main ways to regenerate the planet. I think that hasn't really permeated mass consciousness yet. So every year we see another documentary come out about it. Mm -hmm. We see more and more people get involved in it, but I think it's going to trend really hard in the next couple of years. Yeah. Is there a COP28 um, speech going to be about make soil or what is it going to be? What are you going to be sharing? Yeah, that, that talk is going to be uh, more about uh, how cities can adopt this program as a way to make progress on their sustainability goals. So right now okay. cities are in a place where they have made all these promises about 2030 or 2050 sustainability goals. Mm -hmm. Most cities are behind on all of them or have made no progress on any of them. The UN has been very clear that many, if not most of the SDGs that they set out to do something about have made very little progress or are behind yeah. schedule. So I'm glad they've been honest about that. And many yeah. cities are stuck uh, with this organic waste situation where it's all going to the landfill and they either do nothing or they get a bunch of trucks together and build a bunch of specialized garbage trucks to go around and collect all the organic matter. And that's very expensive. And it, and it, there's a huge greenhouse gas footprint of creating a dump truck. <laughs> like you don't have to be a imagine. rocket scientist to know that. Yeah. And, and then they have to truck that way out of the city and push all that stuff around with bulldozers that also, and then they have to push all that stuff around with bulldozers that get a 
very poor, you know, gas mileage. Uh, you know, you don't need, again, to be a rocket scientist to know that a bulldozer, you know, doesn't yeah. go very far. And so the greenhouse gas accounting at the end of all of that is very poor. And the alternative that we're talking to cities about now is just to say, adopt this program, your citizens can start handling a lot of this organic waste situation nice. without any additional funding, really, without any additional infrastructure, just humans teaming up with nature and learning how to regenerate the planet together. Amazing. Yeah. And what about, um, so I know that you're vegan now. Has, um, how long have you been vegan and when did that start? And how do you think also veganism and then climate change and sustainability are kind of intersected? Yeah, so I've been vegan for... I think 10 months now and yes. it was kind of an overnight change Wow, cool! and I know that in the vegan movement and the plant-based movement there's a lot of talk about uh, sustainability and how it's yeah. a more sustainable diet but I had been interested in that stuff a long time ago even before becoming vegan and so I I went way into the regenerative agriculture side of things which is the philosophy that you can incorporate animals in agriculture in a way that's actually beneficial to nature. And there's a lot of truth to that because animals in nature co-evolved, grasslands and cows and things like this. Um, but the sad truth is almost no agriculture is regenerative agriculture. Yeah. And what's interesting though is that even though I was trying to live that way, yeah. I eventually became vegan entirely for sort of what you would call spiritual reasons yeah. and matters of consciousness. So your regenerative agriculture experience, could we touch upon that? Yeah, then? yeah, yeah. So were you, you said that you raised uh, your own animals? Yes, I lived yeah. on farms, I helped raise animals, and I visited a lot of regenerative farms. And, you yeah. know, the idea there is you can take a very degraded piece of land and you can have, let's say, cows grazing on it, and it will actually restore the grassland. And they're doing it for free, essentially, mm. compared to it would cost a lot of money to have humans go and try to restore that grassland. Got it, yeah. And I still think that animals belong on pasture like that. So it's true that animals can help regenerate nature, but I'm of the mindset now that I still don't need to eat them. Mm. And we also don't need to be breeding yeah millions and hundreds of millions of animals into existence for the purpose of eating them so that's where i'm no longer on the regenerative agriculture nice. train uh, but if the existing agriculture system were to transition to regenerative agriculture it would be a step forward but ultimately humanity is going to have to Make change. look in the mirror yeah. and say is it really necessary to eat animals and that's what changed with me yeah is little by little i started meeting vegans who were healthy and I'd always believed that vegans were always sickly. Really? A vegan was either somebody who was getting sick or about to quit being vegan, no. you know? And it was just like this kind of propaganda that I made the little yeah, echo yeah. chamber of being in the paleo happens, movement yeah. and stuff like this. Yeah. So maybe about a year and a half ago, it really started to dawn on me that there were people who were vegan and they were healthy. Nice. And that it wasn't necessary to eat animals. Nice. And that just was stuck in my brain for like a year because it's like, why would you do that if it's not necessary? Yeah. And I still want to see animals in nature. We want to restore ecosystems. We want to have as much biodiversity as possible. But I now believe that humans can live on fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, algae, yeah. things like this, and be completely healthy. Amazing. Yeah. And um, so you started obviously make soil four years ago and then you turned vegan last year. So how... Um, do you see veganism and, and climate change and stuff? And is it essential for our world to switch to a plant-based diet for the climate? Yeah, it's interesting because once the vegan piece dropped in, I felt like that was a, a missing piece that kind of completed my mission because I was already doing the Make Soil initiative yeah. around the world. And what's interesting, though, is you're primarily composting plant-based food scraps when you're when you're doing right. it right? you can compost meat and bones and stuff like that but when you create the new soil yeah. you're also then growing food out of it so when people make new soil they tend to want to grow things in it mm. and they're often in urban environments and so they tend to grow vegetables in it right. you don't make a little soil and then like get a cow and walk it back and forth in it <laughs> no you like plant <laughs> seeds in it yes and so make soil was already helping take the world in a more plant-based direction yeah, just yeah, by yeah. virtue of that 
And so now that the vegan part is there, yeah. it just feels like a real completion. And Amazing. I also want to say that I don't want a future where it's plant-based, but industrial plant-based, where it's just giant fields of mm. corn and wheat and soy turning into weird food products. I really believe that if we, if we were all enlightened and then just decided we're just going to make an enlightened food system, it would be a highly biodiverse kind of food forest kind of setup where you have yeah. lots of different plants, thousands of different varieties of fruits and vegetables um, living in, in co-planted in the same ecosystems. And yeah. that's what the food system needs to look like ultimately. I love that because it's kind of, um, you're saying that just because uh, it's vegan, it still needs to be very much grounded in just people and, and you know. It's totally maybe. possible to, to be vegan and still consume food in a way that's very damaging to the planet. It's very uh, common mm. that there are huge fields of GMO soybeans being sprayed yeah. with tons of pesticides to make some fake burger, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's horrible for the planet. So this is one area where I do find many vegans mm, a bit uneducated. Yeah. And it's nice to be able to come with my background in regenerative agriculture and say, well, what does a regenerative plant-based agriculture really look like? And But do you have uh, knowledge about like how destructive it is to the climate versus like... Because what I've understood is that people like to argue against veganism and plant-based diet and they'll say that um you know they'll use the avocados and almonds the uh, argument that it's uh damaging to the environment for the almond milk and for avocados so then and then it, i've heard that still the most um uh what is it uh the most local the most local like meat dairy and eggs is still more destructive to the environment than the most flown out fruit and vegetables yeah I've heard all of those yeah. different arguments, and the problem is we're all just trusting some researcher somewhere. Like, almost none of us are going and looking at the numbers and going in and finding where the numbers came from and crunching them ourselves. So you're just kind of being, you feel like a ping pong being knocked back and forth between these, these camps. Uh, True. What does make sense to me, though, having participated in, in agriculture, uh, is that this idea that almonds are bad because they take too much water or avocados are bad because they too, take too much water. It's absurd. And here's why. There's some truth to the fact that thousands and thousands of almond trees in the middle of the desert being irrigated is highly wasteful. Mm. But that's not how the food system should work anyway. But in this neighborhood, if you had five almond trees amongst the neighbors here and five avocado trees, and whatever, like there's hundreds of different nuts, right? Pecan mm -hmm. nuts or whatever. I don't even know what grows around here. But like, that would be a blessing in your neighborhood. You don't need 5,000 walnut trees in the middle of the desert. Mm -hmm. You just need that for this commodity agriculture system that we're stuck in right now. So you want to get out of that. You want to get into a distributed, more decentralized food system. And then there's no like evil plant. There's like the avocados, the evil plant or what? No, it's just like you could, you could water an avocado tree with your dishwater from a single house, right? No problem. Wow. Now there's no problem. So you see, that's how we need to be thinking. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I love that. It promotes that, you know, we are, as vegans as well, like we're promoting um, anything that's beneficial for the climate, uh, which is, is, for starters, getting rid of the animal agriculture, which is so destructive, towards a plant-based agriculture, but then also make that plant-based one more sustainable as well. Absolutely. And this yeah. is also where I think talking about climate in particular is very narrow-minded because the whole thing gets reduced down to mm. a few gases in the atmosphere. Mm. Too much CO2, too much methane. Um, and really, that's just a symptom of a broader problem, which is that almost every single human institution is completely out of harmony with nature. Mm. So the amount of pollution, the amount of habitat loss, yeah. the amount of biodiversity loss, uh, the chemicals we've unleashed onto the environment without even realizing it. Yeah. Uh, these are huge, huge problems. And the overfishing of the oceans. I mean, listen, I'm not going to eat fish again because of my kind of spiritual transformation. 
But the truth is that if humans behave themselves, they could eat animals out of the ocean forever. If they didn't overfish, if they were respected the ocean, right? If wow. they had a balanced diet, like you can't really argue that because humans did that up till now, right? right? It's just 8 billion people who want the freshest sushi and throw half of it away and right. have giant mechanized boats trolling the oceans day in and day out. That's destroying them. But there's, there is an amount of meat consumption and fish consumption that nature can handle. And that's, that is how a lot of humanity evolved up to yeah, that point. Being in harmony with nature. So that's yeah. why I say like, it's not, if I really put my mind to it and if we all did, we could find a way to keep eating animals in a sustainable way. But I don't want to go in that direction because I think there's other reasons to not eat the animals for reasons of consciousness. Um, yeah. Yeah. But doing an industrial vegan system that is also out of balance with nature is also going to be a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, there's just too few people who understand how do you even live in harmony with nature. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But I, I feel like in our lifetime that might not be achievable, like to live again with har in harmony with nature. I feel like we are... That was a long time ago. <laughs> and for us to now make change, like to go back, like... Like, just like that's, that's why I think the regenerative ag animal agriculture is just not um, really achievable because we can't all go back, go and have like cows in our garden, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um. That's at least what I've understood with the vegan debate about animal agriculture is that a lot of people say, oh, if we regenerative agriculture is the way to go. But I just I don't know if that's achievable in our lifetime for the world to do that. It, it with given our demand for meat. No, products, not given you know? the demands. Yeah. Like, like you can't have a hamburger on a dollar menu at a fast food joint. It yeah. doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like if that's happening, then a lot of things are being mistreated along the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But also right now, the whole world couldn't have a soy burger without also the damaging the planet because even the soy production is being done in an ecologically destructive way but n Less most so. of the soy goes to the animals well, that's also a problem farm. right so if we get rid of the animals <laughs> and we eat industrial corn wheat and soy as humans it would still be lower it'll be lower yeah but it'll, but it'll it still be, be detrimental yeah, okay. Got so it. that's why yeah. i just want to rethink the entire food system yeah. Start taking all your food scraps, create new soil out of it. Cool. Like you've got a beautiful yard here, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 you yeah. take that new soil, you put it in the ground, you take your dishwater, your bath water, you let it go into the yard. Wow. And you can grow lots and lots of food in a backyard, yeah. in a front yard, in a community garden, in a communal space. So we really have to rethink the design of cities and communities all together. I like it. And that would be a sustainable food system, along with having more yeah. community, more resilient uh, yeah. societies. And like you said, everyone can do that. Everyone can, uh, um, sorry, what's the word? Everyone can compost their garbage. Everyone like can do it. it. Everyone can participate. Yeah. And I also, anytime somebody says that you can compost your garbage, I always stop them because it's not even garbage. Mm. <laughs> it's really the living planet. It's nutrients. It's life. Organic waste. Yeah. Yeah. And also, if you, compost, uh, if, you, if you make it into soil, then it's not wasted and it's not really waste. So <laughs> nice, there's, this huge, yeah. there's this huge, like, what do you even call this? And so yeah. calling it like organic matter is like technically probably the, the yes, best thing to do. I but it yeah. takes a long time for these words to permeate culture, you know? Yeah. And what are the next goals and, and future projects for you and for uh, Make Soil? So with Make Soil, it's pretty simple. More more soil sites around the world, yeah. which is just more individuals stepping up and hosting, which means they'll invite one, two, three, or five neighbors to bring their food scraps to them. Some, some of the soil makers on the platform have 10, 15, 20 neighbors bringing their food scraps to their so backyard. Cool. Uh, so just more of that, more partnerships with cities because cities yeah. are, like we said, they have this problem that they're having trouble solving. So we are beginning to be formally adopted by cities who are looking for a solution. Cool. So that's good. And we want to get, there's just many, many opportunities to get more people involved. We want to get um, like high schools and middle schools generally have these like wood shop classes and stuff. And they, and every semester they make like some bookshelf that's ugly that nobody wants or some <laughs> car to race down a hill or something. But we could be making, um, soil maker boxes and compost bins instead in all these classes and then giving those to the community right so we want to have a program that's reaching out to schools to do that cool and then beyond that i think personally i'm going to 
now with the advent of AI, I'm going to be um, trying to direct that toward solving more of these environmental issues. Oh. And, you know, my background's in computer science. And where AI really needs to go is that instead of, right, right now people are fighting over it and like trying to make it say what they believe. But what you really want is a super intelligence that's telling you how it is. Cool. So it says, okay, look, Mr. Vegan, look, Mr. Regenerative Agriculturist, look, there's even people arguing that industrial animal culture is the most efficient one because of the amount of animals they cram into small spaces, <laughs> right? So it's just like, you're going to get all of you together yeah, and we're just going to have like the supercomputer tell us what the truth is. No. But right now, almost nobody wants to hear what the truth is. You know, yeah. we just got these little camps that we're stuck in. Um, so I really want to start unleashing AI on on big world problems. Like we know it can make poetry and we know it can make pictures, but it's like, is that the point? Like we've got right. big problems to solve here. That's so cool. That's that's why you're a proper change maker because you're actually thinking outside the box and you're not just using, um, you're not, and you're not just using ChatGPT to make bake a cake. Like you're actually, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know, trying to help yeah. uh, solve the world problems. That's so cool. And at COP28, I hope as well that you meet a lot of uh, inspiring people and that you can collaborate with hopefully. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. We'll find out. It's my first one. Yeah. Um, and it's the early it's the first couple of days of it, so we'll find out. And I will say I know there's a lot of controversy about COP COP twenty eight and greenwashing there is, and all this. There is, yeah. I've been meeting some very sincere people, especially younger people who are after real change. Cool. Uh and I've been meeting some people who are also doing direct environmental work agriculturally uh, restoring ecosystems and things like that but I do feel there's too few people who have actually touched nature in, mm. and worked with nature in a real way yeah. and many of them are trying to work on all these policy issues and things which are important but I don't believe that humans can solve these environmental problems with knowing so little about how the planet works and that's this, that's just the sad situation we're in right now is that very few people know how a planet works. You didn't have but a college, a class in university say, called how planets work. Yeah, you know? but where do we learn that then? Now you, and there's still no college course that really teaches that. <laughs> yeah. So you really have to self-educate and you can, I love doing this. You can, you can set aside a day and go on YouTube and watch yeah. an entire permaculture course, you know, watch it in, you know, I, I watch it in like 50% faster speed or whatever, you know, but I can watch by the end of a day, you could know so much more. Mm. But then Just again, there's, yourself. you're cutting your produce, your tomatoes, your peppers, there's seeds falling out of these things. Yeah. Plant one, you yeah. know, start taking care of these plants. We talk about being plant based. How can you really be plant based if you've never even raised a plant? Aww. Right? <laughs> No, it's true. I love that. There's so many things we can do with our scraps as well. I think there's actually like some like really popular Instagram reels are out about what do you can do with your scraps or what yeah. you can do with this, what you can do with yeah. that. Um, so it's all about knowing that and then actually doing it exactly. as well. Exactly. Yeah, super mm -hmm. cool. Um, is there one final message you'd like to leave with listeners today? Yeah, I would like to encourage people that if they see a problem around them that they feel like they could fix to just get after it like don't wait nice. you're not going to know a whole lot more at the end of your college experience about how to fix the planet there's no classes really about fixing the planet humans have never really thought about planets on a planetary scale that's a that's a big new thing for us so mm. our education system isn't really good at that uh and there's also yes there's a un and yes there's epas and all these government departments but to be perfectly honest there is no department of saving the planet there is like nobody up there or out there that's really got this thing under control or has a handle so on it sad. and so it's sad <laughs> it's a little scary but we also hear that people are depressed because there's nothing for them to do they don't have any meaningful work to do and it's like are you kidding me like look around there's meaningful things to do everywhere because there's, nice. there's such a mess nice. <laughs> so yeah. how, it can't that's both be busy. true that there's nothing to do and that the world is falling apart yeah, right yeah, one of these yeah, things yeah. needs to go so um cool find purpose in that F yeah roll up your sleeves find whether it's cleaning up a stream in your neighborhood but don't just clean it up find out where that pollution's coming from go up the stream till you find the the factory or the village or the whoever needs to change you yes. know and help them um i love that yeah there's so much to do i feel like nowadays young people especially like we're very climate oriented and we're really fighting for i think there's those are the people who go to the climate change protests it's and, true it's true you know and 
so young people, it's what you say is true yeah. about them. And also, I also want to say in a lovingly critical way that we cannot tap, swipe, and like our way to saving the planet. Like you can't just scroll social media all day and thumbs up climate protests or some yeah. nice climate reel or something. Like yeah. humans actually need, at some point somebody has to do something. Right. And it's also not satisfying to just stay on social media all day doing that stuff. And we know yeah. it. We know, nobody feels good after uh, eight hours on social media. 100%. But you will feel amazing if you actually get out there and participate directly in regenerating the planet. I love that. And it'll, it'll, like mental health as well for people will be so good if they go out Absolutely. in nature. Absolutely. Like connect and like planting things. Like it's so much yeah. fun. And, yeah. and a lot of what people look for on a vacation where they go camping to reconnect with nature yeah. or whatever, you will actually get that and more of that if you grow food in your neighborhood if you learn to make soil if you cool. take you can even find wild fruit trees in nature adopt one of them you know like you'll get more of a hit because there's more purpose behind it than just camping for a few days nice i love it yeah. well thank you so much josh this is really really great and you can reach him at josh uh, whitson on instagram um and also his website um and make soil as well you mm -hmm. can join make soil if you are inspired to you know start your own little soy soil site mm -hmm. uh or you can check if there's any in your country that you can you know bring all your um not what was it organic matcher there you <laughs> go bring your organic matcher that's too. the easiest way to start finding one near you yes. you get a first-hand experience of it without yeah. taking on the whole responsibility nice so. i already checked which one uh dubai nice. that i can join good good yeah, yeah. and i'm josh witten on all the yeah. socials and make soils make soil and all the socials yes. so easy. amazing well thank you so much Thanks, um Mara. and thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you in the next one bye Thank you so much for tuning in to the Changemakers podcast. My name is Farah Amber and I hope that you enjoyed the episode. Um, if you did, it would really mean the world to me if you could rate the podcast um, and also remember to follow the podcast to stay updated on new episodes. Um, thank you so much for tuning in today and I will see you in the next one. Bye.